Now we've done quite a few stats in Excel and we're going to ramp it up. We're going to learn more about a, a dedicated stats package called SPSS. I think that stands for smart people are stoked by stats or smart people are suffer stats or something like that. All right. So if you haven't yet, uh, open SPSS and you'll get the uh, screen that looks a little bit like Excel, like a spreadsheet, and then this opening screen that asks you what file you want to open. Now, the first thing that you want to do before you go any further is click on run the tutorial uh, and I want you to look at a couple things uh, in the tutorial. I'd suggest at the very minimum doing the introduction and looking through how to work with um, worksheets uh, and how to use the, the SPSS viewer. And this is the place you're going to go to and come back to when you're trying to figure out how to do something in SPSS that you don't know or how to interpret the results. Um, so you want to look at the, the introduction, uh, reading data, probably the data editor, and, th and then working with the output and, and how to get that output into something like Word. So this is the first place I want you to start. Uh, these introductions are, are these tutorials are, are pretty useful. Um, so go back to those um, when you need to. Now once I'm in SPSS, you know, it looks something that looks a lot like Excel, but it's not quite as flexible. So let's let's do um, something that's incredibly common. I want to bring in an Excel file. So I'm going to open a data document here, uh, and I'm going to switch over to my data. This might take me a little while. Somewhere buried in the depths of my hard drive. Um, now, I know I've got an Excel file in this folder, but it's not showing up. Note that by default, this is only going to open an SAV or a, a, a SPSS specialized uh, spreadsheet. So I'm going to do this drop down. I'm going to switch to an Excel file. OK, and now I can see my Excel file. So we're going to do an example t-test here. Now I'm going to open that. Now if I kind of naively just followed this, um, I notice it's looking for variable names in the first row of data and, and uh, the first worksheet has labeled groups here. So I'm just going to open this to see what happens. Um, so I see it processed. And here I've got an Excel file that looks like it's got uh, two different tables of student grades here that are organized with two different classes. Um, this is not how SPSS likes its data formatted. So just jumping into this uh, and the way that we format a lot of Excel files isn't going to work here. What I'm looking for is I want variables across the top here. So things like student or grade, I want to appear at the top. Um, and then I've got two groups. I need to figure out how to do that. And I'm going to have a grouping variable. So before I get very far with this, I'm going to need to do some manipulation in Excel. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to open this file in Excel and see what it looks like. Okay, so I see something similar here where I've got a title and some descriptive information. So this allows somebody to read it fairly easily, but it's not going to be what works in Excel, or sorry, SPSS. So what I want to do is do some cutting and pasting. And typically I'll open another sheet to do that and even rename it something like SPSS. Um, and I want to cut and paste this information into a, a new place here, class A. So I'm going to call that group class A. And after I do all that, I'm going to end up with something that looks like this. I've got a grouping variable, class A and class B. I've got my student numbers, 1 through 10 and 1 through 12. And I've got the grade. So I have variables across the top and data down the side. That's what um, SPSS likes. So I'll hit save on that. And now I'll open that in Excel. I'll switch to my new sheet here. And voila, I get something that works much better in SPSS and is formatted in a way that I can use. So follow that to the next presentation.